Hey, it's me, OG Duffy. I find myself in Chatham today. Oh, yes. There's a cash converter and there's a CEX. See what games we can get added to the collection, guys. Always good here in Chatham. I find the CEX is particularly decent. So uh, I'm hoping for some decent uh, pickups today. So fingers crossed. Let's see what we can find, eh? As always, start off by looking in the CEX windows. There's a couple of window displays here in the Chatham branch. Um, something always catches my eye, and this did on this occasion. Now, as you can see there, it's a PS3. It's one of these collections. Now, I've been banging on and on and on about these collections, as have some of you guys. You've been giving me the heads up on these. Uh, well worth checking out. Um, so I was starting to collect to myself. I didn't get this one. It's £78, and I'll be honest, this sort of uh, the Japanese uh, anime style isn't really my cup of tea, you know what I mean? I've um, got a few games like it, and I really must make more of an effort with them. But uh, these collections, are you getting them, guys? Because uh, I think they're only going to go in one direction. So do drop in the comments whether you agree or disagree with that statement. Now, as I say, this CX here in Chatham is a really good one. Have a real good range, a bit of everything, you know, especially on the retro front and in the cupboards here. As you can see, taking a close look at the PS1 games there. Oh, it's nice to see some PS1 games, isn't it? I mean, such a great console for the time, wasn't it? N64. And of course here, looking at that Amiibo, right? 18 pounds. Now I was thinking, should I have got that for little OG? He does like his Pokemon. He does love a bit of Charizard. I was tempted, but I didn't go for it. But then there was this Mario Tennis. Now this is the Game Boy Color Edition. Personally, never played this version. I got it on my Nintendo Switch though, and it's a very great game, really, really enjoyable. Um, so if you played this back in the day, is this worth getting? Is this worth it? 18 notes unboxed? Let me know in the comments, guys. A few nice N64 box games there, including F-Zero X. Very highly rated game, the F-Zero, especially on the SNES. Uh, some nice loose NES games. Uh, I do buy loose NES cartridges. I do think they're all right, actually. I don't mind them. Continuing with the uh, the range here. Look, red, blue, and yellow Pokemon there. Thirty-two pounds each, and some nice Mega Drive games. Again, the good thing with Mega Drive and Sega Master System games is obviously the uh, the condition of them because they weren't in them cardboard packages like the uh, the Nintendo products, so they do live up a lot, lot better. Why didn't Nintendo go with plastic packaging? Seriously, imagine how good quality the SNES and NES games would be now. Evil Dead, there. I, I've looked at that a few times. That one, uh, Hail to the King. I don't mind a bit of Evil Dead and Ash and the rest of it. I mean, quite a good little franchise of original films in particular, you know. And there's this on the Switch. Saifu or Sifu, £28. Looks like a uh, tin edition, so special edition maybe. Um, anyone know anything about that? Worth getting, do you know? I don't really go over Switch at the moment, but I do look at the odd title. So uh, always interesting to see uh, some of these games like this. And of course, it had to be done, didn't it? The Wii U section, as always, guys. You know me, I am a man of routine. And yes, we are getting there slowly, but surely with this full Wii U PAL set, I'll have an update video coming real, real soon. And then follow this, obviously, over to that PS3 section. I do love the PS3. I keep banging on about it, guys. Honestly, get on board with this if you're not already doing so. There are some absolutely amazing games. I mean, that's the Game of the Year edition there. That was a tenner, Borderlands 2. Um, what's the difference between a Game of the Year edition and, and the standard edition there? I just assume it's the updates. And how many updates were there for that game? Because it's one I have never played, guys. I know Little OG is a massive fan of it. And he always bangs on to me how good it is. So I should, I should put it in the system and give it a play, really. Um, the Eye of Judgment, never seen that one before, but it looked like some sort of card, sort of trading battle game. Anyone know anything about that? If so, as always guys, drop it in the comments. But it's always good, always have a good look around this section. Don't get me wrong, you still see lots of the usual sort of suspects like your Grand Theft Auto's and... Uh, but what was nice here, do you know what? 
on the shelves here, not many FIFAs, which tells me they're getting a bit bored, I think, and maybe they're throwing them out. <laughs> I don't really know what they're doing on CEX, but they're not appearing like they were. Um, like I say, they're 50 pence a game. They must have, oh, how many copies of FIFA must must they have in, in the back there or in the bins? <laughs> I don't know. Where's the, what would you guys think? Tell me, drop in the comments. Where are all the copies of FIFA that are churning out of 50 pence a piece? FIFA aside, there's plenty of other football games. PES, Pro Evolution, you can see there. Rango, that was Johnny Depp, didn't it? Did the voice of Rango on the cartoon. I don't think I've ever seen it. I've seen plenty of trailers and stuff, but never the actual, uh, never the actual film itself. Um, a few Red Dead Redemptions there. Quite a few copies of that, as you can see. Resistance 2. Well, I'm not going to talk about Resistance anymore, as you guys know, if you watch what I think of that. What an amazing game for a quid. Uh, although that was number two, and that was two pounds. But anyway, Uncharted as well, a pound. Honestly, you can't go wrong with them one pound titles. And then this caught my eye, look, Turok here. This started life out on the N64, didn't it? And I mean, it's since come sort of PS1 and all the other systems at that time and ilk. Uh, but this on the PS3, I don't think it got the best reviews. Uh, I've not played this one before, but uh, yeah, I honestly don't think it was that great, really. So, uh, Turok on the PS3, guys. I did not buy this, so there's a spoiler. Uh, did I save my money? <laughs> or is it an amazing game that I should have picked up? Comment as always. And placing that back, and just out of interest there, I mean, that's £2, but if you buy the steel tin edition, it's a fiver. So I don't know what you get extra for an extra three notes, but hey, must be worth it, guys, just for that metal tin. Do you guys collect the metal tin game specifically? Um, if so, why? Why? You know, I'm not saying it's a good thing, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I just, you know, they do obviously look very different. Uh, come with extras usually, don't they? Postcards and stuff like that. Um, GameCube games. I say this every week now, and I'm finding myself saying it all the time. The stock of GameCube, I think, is increasing in these outlets, which tells me, I think maybe people aren't collecting for it like they used to. A quick look at some of the OG Xbox games there. A bit of Leisure Suit Larry. And look at this one here, right? This caught my eye. Look at that. Goblin Commander on the Xbox original. Three pound, that one. Now, just look at that artwork. I mean, the game could be absolutely awful. I really don't know. I know nothing about this title, but it, it looked good. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if this was out on the PlayStation, but if it was, it's a game I should look out for, really. Um, yeah, it just looks really interesting. It looks my cup of tea, that one. Or uh, or is that artwork fooling me into purchasing a completely awful game? But three notes, you can't go wrong, really, can you? I did own an original Xbox back in the day. And it was a great console, real breakthrough, especially Xbox Live. I loved Xbox Live. Looking at the Wii games, I always look at the Wii games because you get some real sort of truly unique titles on this system. And every now and then you just see something you've never spotted before and uh, they're generally not that expensive either. Especially like the, the shooter za uh, shooting zapper titles. I always go on about them. Such good fun. And here is one here, Heavy Fire Afghanistan. Don't own that one. Um, it's a zapper gun, obviously, uh, but £22. What do you think of that one, guys? Anyone owned or played that one? Is it worth 22 notes? And talking to show shooters here, reload. I mean, look at this. This looks brilliant, this one. Uh, it was £20. I didn't buy it. But should I have done? I mean, how good a shooter is it? It does look good fun. Um, plenty of different weapons in your arsenal there, I reckon. And... Uh, that's what I say, it's just the Wii. You can't go wrong with the shooters on the Wii. You really, really can't, guys. So reload there. Should I have picked that one up for £20? Does look good fun, it really does. Quick look at the PS2. Didn't delve too deeply because I've got so many PS2 titles. And to be honest, I'm just not getting around to playing them, you know? But there's always some good titles there, so it's always worth a look. Uh, I particularly like the PS2 as well when I'm doing one of my challenges within a budget, you know, how many decent half titles you can get for, uh, for like a 10, 20 quid or whatever. You'd be surprised, there's some really, really good games on there, especially at good budget prices, you know, so always worth checking out, people. Warriors, there's 12 quid. I bought that when it was a tenner. Must have been about, probably about a year ago now. A rock style game, that is, so uh, 
great film, wasn't it? Then I popped over the road, look here, cash converters, always worth a look, cash converters, guys, you get some good bargains sometimes, it's very hit and miss though, you know? Checking out the window here, got a few Mega Drive games in the window, the one there was a pinball game that shone the most out of them for me. And inside here, a load of wrestling figures. Looked like they bought a job lot of brand new wrestling figures there, you know. But anyway, on to the games, the more important stuff, the games, guys. Plenty of Xbox 360 now. I'm not going in for the 360, because as you know, I've got loads and loads of 360 games. I've got to actually store them away up in the loft area, you know, because I've got that many, I really, really have. A few PS4 titles and a couple of little GameCube games just hanging on the end there. Another Two Rock, look. Two Rock comes back again. Godzilla destroy all of whatever it was. Few PS4 titles, but uh, you know me, I'm always on the lookout for those PS3s, and it didn't fail. There's a few PS3 and PS2 titles in here as well. So, as I say, always worth a look in cash converters. As I say, it really is hit and miss store. Some you go to, they'll have loads of stuff, others, you'll have like two or three items. It really is that sort of hit and miss, you know. But at least it gives us another option when we're out doing these game hunts in the various towns where we live, visit, etc. So always worth a look, guys, crack converters or cash converters, as it is officially known. And then I did something I swore I'd never do. I visited a game store. I now, those that know me know I hate game for reasons that are historic. But anyway, looking at this, right, so they've got the Amiga 1200 dead. I mean, that the Commodore 64 Mini was up for $29.99, so I didn't think that was a bad price if you've not got one and you're after one, uh, maybe worth a look, but you'll probably get it as cheap on Amazon. Now the thing is with game guys, I don't know what's going on with it, but I mean it's probably 20% video games now, and now 80% sort of board games, Dungeons and Dragons, figures, pops, all that sort of stuff, so obviously the video game business for them is not doing particularly well, they're having to diversify massively. And their stores that are going on in them sports directs are just horrendous. They're not even worth a look, mate, so uh, don't bother. Now, the reason I have such a, a hang-up with game is because of their poor customer service when I bought them arcade run-up bar stalls that time, I'm sure you remember. But these collector's cage machines here by arcade run-up, I mean, do people genuinely play the games on them? To me, they're so small. How could you even sort of see the screens properly and the rest of it, you know? Or is it just me? Now these as well, Raiders of the Lost Ark here, these, these um, figures. Let me show you these, right? 15 notes. Now is it me or are they really poor quality figures for 15 quid? I mean, it's like really cheap Chinese molded factory jobs. Look at them, they're pretty awful, I thought, for 15 notes a figure. I'd want something a bit more special than that. And a quick look at the uh, the Switch games, guys, because I know quite a few of you on the watch the channel do collect your Switch games and stuff, so uh, there's quite a few of them on there. Bit of Port Royale there, that caught my eye on PS5. Little OG's got a PS5, I haven't. It is, uh, yeah, it needs a few more games out on it, really, than the PS5. And here we go, two for 20 on the selected Switch line, so quick look here, guys, just showing you what was in stock. So there we go, two for 20. Is it happy days for some of you? Are you gonna be visiting the store to go and get some of these? What do you guys think? Do you still use game or do you feel it's gone really to the wall? I, I don't know how much longer it's going to last. I really don't. Uh, it'll be a shame to see it go. Of course it will. But hey, should go after your customers better, guys. Just finished in CEX and I'm not having a pint. I'm having a hot chocolate, people. It's a bit of a first, isn't it? Oh, let's get back to uh, OG Duffy Towers and I'll show you what pickups I've had. It all actually. Back from Chatham, guys. Now Chatham is a, it's one of them towns here in Kent that it doesn't get a lot of love from people, but it gets a lot of love from me, the OG, simply because really of, of the CEX there and the uh, the cash converters. Because hey, there's not many places now to pick up retro games, and uh, cash converters can be hit and miss. Don't get me wrong, but the CEX in Chatham is particularly good. It does never fail me, really. It always has a very nice mix, as you saw there in the video, of real retro games right across the board. So what's not to love with that one? Anyway, let's go grab a beer and let's show you my pickups. I did all right, actually, to be honest, in this game hunt. I didn't do too bad at all. I'm gonna grab myself a can of 
<laughs> you already knew it, guys, didn't you? Stella Artois, because it'd be rude not to. Oh, get that poured into my Mario glass. Mario Kart glass, actually. To be honest, this has seen better days now, this glass. The old, uh, the stickers, or well, not stickers, but the print is coming off the glass now. Anyway, oof, happy days, guys. Let's get to them pickups. As I say, a real mixed bag, so let's get to them. Oh, yes. Right, okay. First game. Cost me a total of five pounds, this one, for the Nintendo NES. Kickle Cubicle. I know nothing about this at all. Uh, the reason I picked this up, it sounds like it's going to be sort of a puzzler game, and I do it with puzzle games like your, your Paiu Paiu and your Tetris and all that sort of stuff. And Kickle Cubicle, hey, <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be that sort of game. Now, I don't mind collecting loose car NES games. Uh, I, I still think they look pretty sexy on the shelf when you stack them up like, you know. So I don't mind buying NES games unboxed. Uh, that was £5, that one, Kickle Cubicle. Um... I'll be honest, I mean, it, the lovely bright logo there, isn't it, on the sticker there. I mean, it looks good. <laughs> Fingers crossed, it is a decent puzzler. I am thinking it is a puzzler. So that's the first one. Next up, we've got another NES game, and it is this. Again, at £6, Isolated Warrior, sold as unboxed, because obviously it's car only. So, yes, CEX, it will come as unboxed. Um, again, an NES game, know nothing about this one. But as I say, with the NES games, I think as well, when you see them lose cars like this, I think they're so cheap to buy, what's not to love with them, really? You know what I mean? So for a few quid now, I mean, like six pounds, etc. I don't think you can go wrong. You really can't. And there was quite a few loose carts of uh, NES games there in the Chatham branch of CEX, which is always great to see. So I thought I'd pick that one up. Uh, Isolated Warrior. Looks a bit like a... It, I'm going to guess that's a shoot em up. Hey, we'll soon see. I'll be showing you some footage there. But obviously I don't see that until I put these videos together. Next one, another NES game, guys. Again, a loose cart. And it is this, Golf on the NES. Probably needs very little introduction, if any, at all. But um, I would imagine this is probably one of the very early release games for the NES. I could be wrong. I'm no expert when it comes to the NES. But uh, just looking at that sort of black label there, which was quite synonymous with the early releases, like your early Mario and stuff. I would imagine that this was quite a uh, quite a a, mod, a a newer release in the days of the NES. Now my this is 1985. This was was done. So yeah. So yeah. When was the uh, NES released? Yeah, it got to be mid 80s, isn't it? So um, anyway, I do remember playing Mario Golf on the Game Boy. Or I think it wasn't called Mario Golf. I think it was just called Golf, a bit like this. But it had like a Mario character on the label, so I refer to it as Mario Golf. But I'm holding out high hopes for this because if there's anything like that golf game on the GameCube, uh, GameCube, Game Boy, then I'll tell you what, it's going to be an half decent title, that one. Where would any game pickup hunt video be without some PS3, guys? Oh, yes. Now, this. Fight Night Round 3. Okay, it was three whole pounds. I've already got, I'm just looking at the shelf now as I'm speaking. I've already got a uh, Fight Night Round 4. Uh, no, sorry, Fight Night Round 3. And I've got Fight Night Champions. I can't see, my eyes are failing me. Fight Night yeah, Champions, which is great. Uh, and this is, uh, but this one, I would have played this on the Xbox 360, and I've got a copy down there, but I've no Xboxes set up in the games room, only PlayStation, so uh, I'm looking forward to giving this a, uh, a play. In particular, I enjoy the story modes on these games, and the ones where you can create your own champion, and sort of play through the ranks, and, and win the title, and all that sort of stuff. And those that watch the channel know, the OG Duffy is a sucker for a boxing game. I do love a boxing game game and carrying on with that ps3 theme oh yes is this the orange box collection the orange box. 
Now this I owned on PC many, many years ago. I remember buying it and downloading it. I remember playing Half-Life 2 on this. Um, Team Fortress in particular was a great, great, great online game. One I thoroughly enjoyed. And Half-Life 2 as well, like I say, I already mentioned that. And Portal, the original Portal game. Now, the problem with this, I'm guessing, is the servers especially for Team Fortress. Are the servers still open for Team Fortress on this, the PS3? I doubt they are, you know. But hey, it was a tenner. They had a few copies of this in there. So obviously I picked through and I picked the one with a nicer manual. So happy days with that. Nothing not to love about that. The orange box. Look forward to revisiting this one. And to my final pickup, guys. Guess what system? Go on, I'll give you a guess. <laughs> You're right, it's the Wii U. Because you know me, I'm going for that full pal set. Oh yes. I spent £22 on this and it is Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventure. Or oh, Adventures and the Ghostly Adventures. Sorry, I, I missed the S off the title. Uh, Pac is back. I've never played these. I think it's come out on several systems. And I also know that there's a Pac-Man um, Adventures 2 for Wii U, which I do not own yet. <laughs> so let's go get this added to the shelf and then come back, finish my beer and give a quick round up for everyone. It's my therapy time, guys, which means I'm adding a Wii U game to the collection. Oh, it's mounting up now. They're mounting up. Anyway, P for Pac-Man. Very easy one to place, this one. It's going to live between the following. Uh, that is a one uh, one piece there. Has anyone watched that on the Netflix show? That's one piece, isn't it? Yeah, him with a dodgy hat. It's uh, Craig Fairbrass as a chef or something. Not seen it, obviously, nor played it. Uh, and Paper Mario Color Splash. Hey, it's a Mario game. What's not to love with that, guys? So in he goes. Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures is going to go sit in the collection there. Welcome to the collection, Pac-Man. We're getting there. So that concludes the game hunt from Chatham in Kent. Now, as I said earlier, it does get a bad rep as, as a, 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 a neighbourhood in general. But do you know what? I think the shop in there is all right. I really do. Uh, the weather spoons ain't too bad either. The beer's wet and it's cold. What's more to love than that, guys? Anyway, some nice little pickups, some free NES games to add, two PS3 games to add, and of course, I was lucky enough to add another Wii U game off of that full power set. I really am getting there. I've got a pile of games to add to that collection, actually, so uh, stay tuned, and I'll get that update done real, real soon. And anyway, guys, I've been OG Duffy. You've been awesome as always. Now tell me, what pickups have you had of late from CEX? And in particular, has anyone had any sort of unboxed items uh, where it's been classed as unboxed, but actually, you know, it's got a manual and it's boxed and everything else. Because of some damage, you've got a bit of a bargain. Because some can be had, guys. Anyway, as I say, I've been OG Duffy. Look after yourselves. See you on the next one. Like, comment, do all that good stuff. Cheers, guys. This beer is for you. See you on the next one.